very happy this August that we've got a, uh, a Richard Attenborough season. Uh, coincides with his 90th birthday. It's uh, working in partnership with Embrace Arts, and we're very lucky to have um, been given some guidance on the films uh, from his son Michael, which is um, which is really great. Actually, it's a nice sort of a personal kind of touch to it. It's um, with somebody like Richard, you've got so many years of of films and um, thing, not just what he's produced, what he's directed, but what he's acted in as well. It's quite difficult to select just a few films that kind of cover that. So. Um, with Michael's help, we've uh, come up with a, what we think is a decent selection. So, um, kick things off with Gandhi, um, which is obviously a, a huge passion project for Richard. It took um, somewhere in the region of sort of 18 to 20 years just to raise the finances. Um, beginning, I think, in 1962, uh, when he was sort of the initial discussions began about Gandhi. And then um, it was originally going to be uh, a David Lean um, film. Uh, but then he and it was going to star Richard Attenborough in the lead role. But then he uh, Lean started filming Ryan's Daughter, uh, and Attenborough kept whiling away trying to raise the finances. Ended up with getting the final ten million from the um, the National Indian Film Board, I think. Um, yeah, and then they they got to make it, and there was obviously he uh, cast Ben Kingsley, um, whose whose father was Gujarati, uh, which obviously gave it another sort of personal element to it. Huge fascinating epic really moving um huge number of extras as well i think um i remember reading somewhere that there was something like uh i think it's 300,000 which made when attenborough was in charge of them made him kind of i think he was in charge of the the world's seventh largest army or something like that at the time which um which is great i mean think about it, films on that scale um just don't happen anymore it's all sort of added um See, it's all done with CGI now. You know, when you see films of these huge armies, you know, it's kind of one guy just replicated over and over again. So um, we follow uh, that with Seance uh, on a wet afternoon, um, which is um, a strange choice, actually, for, um, for Attenborough to make. It was um, 64, so it was off the back of um, The Great Escape, which was obviously a huge critical commercial success. I think it you know, made its budget sort of three times over. It was massive profit for that time. Um, and then he chose to, to make this film, um, Seance on a Wet Afternoon, where he plays the um, sort of browbeaten husband um, to this uh, domineering psychic. Um, and they're involved in the kidnapping of a girl. And it's quite a strange project that he took on. Um, but he's brilliant in it, as, you, as you'd expect. He kind of has this um, real sort of natural... Uh, quality or this cowed feeling that you just feel real sim uh, sympathy for him but what him and his wife go about doing is really an awful <laughs> horrible crime he chose projects that appealed to him he wasn't just always interested in making these huge um these huge blockbusters with huge budgets it was if a script interested him um then he would go for it i think it's because the reason he became so famous the reason he became so popular is because he he imbued he was imbued with a lot of qualities that British people wanted to see, especially I guess in the forties. Um, he has this kind of like reserved kind of nature. He's a very generous man, you know. He kind of does with charity, and I guess it's kind of British people kind of wanting to see reflect what they want to see in themselves, you know. That kind of that old fashioned kind of British gent. One of the key films we're showing in the season is um, is Brighton Rock. Um, and it's funny because it's kind of every film student is made to watch it. It is you, you go into film and they sort of go, here is British noir. If you watch that, you're kind of sorted. You know everything you need to know about British noir. Um, 1947, uh, set in interwar years in Brighton. Uh, and Attenborough plays uh, Pinky Brown, this horrible, um, loathsome thug who kind of starts to sort of rise up within the ranks of local gangs. Um, and to do so has to kind of persuade this, um, by killing one of the, one of the uh, rival gang members, he has to persuade a local woman not to tell the police uh, on him. So um, it's a marriage of convenience. And he's a horrible, nasty piece of work. And he kind of, um, he's immoral, he's just, he uses people, he leaves this horrible, there's a key scene where he's recording a voice for, a voiceover for Ruth on this little record player that etches your voice in. And he... Um, he records a horrible, horrible message. Um, 
And then you're at the end of the film, it's one of the most heartbreaking, saddening endings because the film, the record's scratched and the message is twisted. Um, but yeah, for for like for such a nice guy who is who seems by all accounts to be a lovely gentleman, you know, and kind of does a lot for charity and things, he's very good at playing a, a horrible, uh, a horrible hoodlum, really. Playing the um, notorious um, British serial killer John Christie, um, who killed, I think it was up to uh, terrified, up to eight women within ten Willington Place. Um, Including it, it is um, supposed the wife and daughter of um, of this man Timothy Evans, uh, and Timothy Evans was um, was tried for the the murder of his daughter, and was hung. And it was it was that trial and the subsequent kind of furor over it when it was decided that that it might that it was probably Christie who did you know committed these crimes. Um, it was a major step actually in the sort of the end of capital punishment in Britain. You know, seen as a gross. Um, Gross miscarriage of justice, and I think that's what Attenborough was kind of drawn to. That the subject matter is—it's a huge change to play this character, and he's—he's he's incredible in the film, but he's—he's he's horrific and creepy, and the crimes that the Christie committed are are unspeakable. Um, but he—he he realized that the what the the film was about it wasn't sensationalism. It wasn't this kind of tabloid, kind of horrible, kind of um, macabre, kind of interest. It was—it was about the justice system. It was about kind of Timothy Evans, who's brilliantly played by John Hurt, who was BAFTA nominated. And it's about that, um, yeah, it's about the justice system. It's about this miscarriage of justice that, that ended up with Timothy Evans and the kind of mistakes that were made during the trial. Um, but yeah, but Attenborough's, yeah, superb in it. And it's it's definitely worth catching. It's, um, it's a very, very good film. It's very well made. Um, yeah, but it's uh, you won't see Attenborough in the same light again. <laughs> I think it's um it was one of his favourite Shadowlands. It was um it was quite nice actually. Michael told us recently um that it was kind of the film he was most proud of, um and you can see why. I mean, it's um it's often held held up with these kind of other films of like sort of um I think Bridge Bridges of Madison County and things like that on Golden Pond. Films are kind of these old fashioned tear jerkers that just reduce people to kind of sobbing wrecks it's um it's a it's it's wonderfully made it's it's um what Anne is able to do is draw out these these beautiful performances um from Anthony Hopkins as C.S. Lewis uh, and Deborah Ringer as, the, as this kind of um feisty poet who comes into his kind of reserved life um yeah and it's um he's able to draw these performances out and it's the the, the shift in C.S. Lewis's characters is beautifully portrayed by by Anthony Hopkins, and um, I can see why Attenborough was so proud of it. I think, and there's a reason that it, you know, is still popular today. That people do bring it up, and it's often kind of cited as kind of one of those, um, you know, the kind of heartbreaking films that people talk about. And um, uh, too often that films can kind of become um, maudlin, and whether that's because it's the the script or whether it's because of the direction, but I think the performance, obviously, as well, is is, is kind of key to that, and it. It does sidestep that. It's kind of a, it feels um, real, and you you feel that C.S. Lewis is a real character. But it goes beyond the kind of the author people know about uh, to to create like a really believable character, which is which is why it makes it all the more heartbreaking that it's uh, with what happens as as um, the, this poet um, as she succumbs uh, to cancer, and he has to deal with kind of his faith and his life and what this means for him. It's um, yeah, it's not it's not sensational. It's just it's just very well made. It's a real treat for us. Um, it's quite funny because we'd recently been talking, I'd, I'd been talking with um, the man marketing manager here, how I wanted to show some Attenborough films. Um, because he's so key to Leicester, I mean, I, I studied at University of Leicester and studied in the Attenborough Tower, uh, which is kind of uh, quite strange now to think about it. But it's he's so important um, to Leicester as kind of this figure of culture. People um, hold him to their hearts and see him as a, a, a local Leicester lad. Which is quite nice, really. So, and he's, you know, he's loved in the city. And it's a real treat for us to be able to show him these films.